Welcome everyone to a trailer breakdown for the upcoming SRX Superstar Racing Experience game coming May 28th to Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and to the PC through the Steam platform. The timing of this announcement caught me a bit by surprise, however maybe it shouldn't have for a couple of reasons. First, the Superstar Racing Experience is about to start their summer racing schedule in June, so the timing of this announcement will generate a lot of marketing and buzz for the very first event. And secondly, this is now the third in the Tony Stewart series of racing games. They got it started with Tony Stewart Sprint Car Racing, and that was followed up with Tony Stewart All-American Racing. So for this third installment, they have followed along with the same sort of a marketing schedule. Meaning that they come out with the announcement, which is what we've seen today as of this recording, and then the release of the game itself comes very shortly thereafter. So a very condensed marketing schedule, create a lot of buzz in a very short amount of time, and then the game is released. In today's video, we're going to talk about some basic information that I gathered from the trailer itself, and then at the very end, I will give a few thoughts of my own as we get closer to release day on May 28th. So let's get started with the pre-order itself. As of the recording of this video, only the Xbox pre-order is live, and it's listed at $39.99. Naturally, I would assume the pricing would be standard across all the platforms, but again, as of this recording, only the Xbox pre-order is live at $39.99. So let's get started with what information is available in the trailer, and how can we interpret that as we get closer to the release. Let's start with a brief description of the headline series itself. What is the SRX Racing Series? Well, it was started by Tony Stewart, Ray Everham, and a few others to bring racing back to its grassroots. So we're talking about short track racing here, both on the asphalt as well as the dirt tracks. The cars themselves are going to be very similar in style to the IROC series. Now, I don't necessarily mean in the look of the car, but in the way the racing is done. For those of you who remember the IROC series, you have a lot of superstars who are getting into identically prepared race cars, and that's exactly what you're going to see with SRX. Now, you can go to the website and see a full list of some of the superstars, but here in a few slides, we're going to see a couple of examples. We're talking about past and present superstars in both dirt as well as asphalt from a variety of backgrounds, including both NASCAR and IndyCar and some of the lower series as well. On your screen now are a few of the drivers that are going to be racing in both the real life series as well as in the game. This series has a lot of superstars, a lot of names that you're going to immediately recognize, such as two across the top, Tony Stewart and Bobby Labonte from the NASCAR side of things. And then in the bottom left-hand corner, Tony Kanaan, a superstar from the IndyCar ranks. But then it's also going to contain some other stars that maybe you're not as familiar with, such as Doug Kobe in the bottom right, who is a superstar in the Whelan Modified series. So we're going to have a diverse background of drivers, and that is something that I'm definitely looking forward to. Now let's move on to the tracks themselves. There are going to be 50-plus tracks in the game, but only six of them will be licensed as of now. And those licensed tracks will be Eldora, Knoxville Raceway, Lucas Oil Raceway, Nashville Fairgrounds, Slinger Speedway, and finally Stafford Speedway. So we're going to have a total of 50. Only six of those are licensed. And I'm sure some of those remaining tracks are going to pull from the previous Tony Stewart games. Rest assured, though, we're not going to be limited to just racing the SRX cars in this game. We're also going to have the stadium trucks, as well as the 305 wingless sprints, which should be a ton of fun based on some of the open wheel action we've had in the previous Tony Stewart games. And then the dirt late models as well. Now, some of this content, such as the dirt late models, have been featured in previous Tony Stewart games, so we'll have to wait and see how much of that carries over to this game, or are we going to get something completely new, especially with regards to physics. As far as game modes, 
Single player will have at least two options, first being the quick play mode, which will allow you to set up any car and track combination you prefer, or a more structured career mode, which will have you taking a journey through the different series as you work your way up toward ultimately becoming a superstar in the SRX series. Or if you prefer the online multiplayer, you'll have an opportunity to do that as well against others who have purchased the game. Those are a few things that stuck out to me as I was looking through the trailer. But of course, I highly recommend you follow the link in the description below. Watch the trailer for yourself because I'm sure there are going to be different things that pop out and really stick in your mind that are different from what were important to me. So definitely recommend everyone checking out the trailer for yourself. Now, as we end up today's video, uh, I want to share a few thoughts that occurred to me as I was watching through a, the trailer. A few questions that I have in my mind, but first things first, keep in mind that these are strictly based on the trailer. I don't have any additional information about the game beyond that. So these are thoughts that I have that might very well change based on information that gets released between now and the official release of the game on May 28th. In fact, I hope some of these do as we get more and more information about the game. But a few things that popped into my head. First is my overall reaction is that I expect the gameplay experience to be very similar to what we saw with Tony Stewart's All-American Racing. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Since we are now in the third of the Tony Stewart Racing games, we've seen an evolution of sorts uh, starting with Tony Stewart's Sprint Car Racing. The physics there were pretty out of touch uh, and pretty basic overall, but those physics got a big overhaul for Tony Stewart All-American Racing, which was the second in the series. Now what are we going to get here in SRX, the third game? Are we going to get a continued evolution of the physics? We're not sure. By the looks of the trailer, I'm not expecting a whole lot of differences between All-American Racing and SRX. However, you just never know. Again, it's, it's always so hard to tell anything final from a trailer, but just gathering what I could, I'm expecting something very similar in the physics department. Also, what about graphics? We've seen the graphics haven't really been up to par, in my opinion, to other racing games on the market, as well as other racing simulators, for that matter. Keep in mind, this is not intended to be a full-fledged racing simulator. This isn't intending to be iRacing or other similar titles. This is intended to be fun for really everyone, from kids all the way up through adults who are well-versed in racing simulators. This is intended to really appeal to a very wide audience. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about physics as well as the graphics. But the graphics have been lagging, in my opinion, and I'm looking for something of an upgrade. Now, there's nothing really in the trailer that tell me that we're going to get a huge change or upgrade in the graphics, but I'm hoping that maybe that's the case when we get to the final product. And finally, what are our expectations about DLC? With the initial titles, the first two in the Tony Stewart Racing series, We've seen DLC along the way. We've gotten some initial content up front, which in this case seems to be a very diverse array of content. I mean, keep in mind, we have 50 tracks. Only six of those are going to be licensed, but a total of 50 tracks. And of those, I'm sure we're going to see not only dirt and asphalt ovals, but we're going to see road courses, particularly for the stadium trucks. So I'm expecting to see high banks, low banks, you know, your flat tracks, your high bank tracks, uh, particularly with uh, tracks like Slinger. And I'm expecting to see different racing or racetrack lengths from your quarter miles, maybe even smaller, all the way up through, who knows, maybe we get some half mile or even bigger other than places like uh, Eldora. I know Nashville Fairgrounds, my very favorite track is a 5 8 mile. So who knows how big the tracks are going to get. So I'm expecting a lot of diverse uh, content in this game and that is a huge bonus. But what do we get from DLC? Do we get uh, more licensed content on the track side of things? Or maybe we get more fantasy tracks, more fantasy types of cars. We'll just have to wait and see, but overall, I'm very excited about the game. I can't wait to find out more between now 
and the official release on May 28th.